step up. <laughs> he says, come on, Judy, let's go out once. What do you say we go out once? And I said, well, um, to tell you the truth, I was looking for someone a little closer to the top of the food chain. <laughs> And then, you know what? You know what happened? He tried to kiss me. No, he cannot possess me. He tried to kiss me, and he kissed like a Pez dispenser. <laughs> His head fell back 180 degrees. <laughs> and his tongue popped out. <laughs> like I'm supposed to give him communion. <laughs> Thank you so much. You people mean nothing to me. Thank you. Our next guest is someone who is very remarkable. And it's difficult to express my admiration for her. For words do not seem to suffice. So I'm forced to go back to my first love to introduce her. Interpret of death. <laughs> Okay. Now let's take, <laughs> let's take that same dance and see how might it might have been how different it might seem if it had been choreographed by a Jerome Robbins. <laughs> Cut the bit. Oh. <laughs> You're not with the bit. Now, the next girl is real funny. Damn funny, as they say in those off-Broadway plays. Her name is Miss Paula Poundstone. How you doing? Great. I'm in a very fine mood myself. I just turned over a new leaf. I decided I'd like to take better control of my life and make sure that less things go wrong each day. So what I've been doing is sleeping up to 20 hours a day. <laughs> I figured that in four hours, even I couldn't screw up that many things. And of course, if I have to parallel park it all within that time, that really just leaves me with the one hour to kill. That even I could do that. My car actually doesn't have power steering, so I can even lose weight while parking. <laughs> Does anybody here drive a car without power steering? Yeah. Isn't it hard to turn the wheel? Sometimes I'll be going to like a friend's house and I accidentally go past. I just go, well then forget it. I'll go another time. <laughs> Couldn't possibly turn the wheel and hang out. I'm not a good driver, actually, and I know that I'm not a good driver. I don't need anyone else's help to know. People honk and yell at me. Do they think that they're helping? People honk at me, it makes me have to crash into their car. <laughs> I don't want to, I have to. They honk, they go, lousy driver, I crash right into their car. I go, you were right. <laughs> I had no idea till you pointed it out, but look there. Also, cops pick on me. Has anybody here ever been pulled over for attempted speeding? said, yeah, well, we knew what you were trying to do, and if you didn't have such a piece of shit car, you could have gotten away with it, too. <laughs> Sometimes I get pulled over on purpose because I get, I get lost, and I figure at least if I'm getting a ticket, I have time to ask how to get where I'm going. I have a disease with directions. And I ask people, I like get to the point of loss where I start to cry, and then really no one can explain anything. And I ask, and people say stuff like, go north. <laughs> Thank you, but I, I can't tell left from right without pretending to eat. 
no idea where north might be. Or else I give that big long list of directions. And I can't really do it that way either because I can only remember one thing at a time, maybe. They go, okay, you go right up here. I drive away while they're talking. <laughs> I go right up there while it's still fresh on my mind. And then I pull over and ask someone else. <laughs> my dad says that I have a, he says I have a sarcastic tone and he used to make him really mad. He'd go, young lady, I'm afraid I do not like that tone of voice. I go, Dad, you're a big guy. There is nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> and he is a big guy. He's a big, huge guy. Only he's got those little teeny spindly dad legs. <laughs> and he has very severe arthritis in his knees, and he doesn't understand why. He's an engineer. I think this is scary. I said, Dad, it's like a rock on toothpicks. Do a diagram, figure it out. <laughs> And he got screwed when they went metric. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, nothing. <laughs> and now I'm not good with numbers, and therefore I have no money at all. But I, I put my clothes in the dry cleaners. I don't have enough money to get them out again. It's like they're in jail waiting on me to spring them. <laughs> I have to go in every so often and go, well, could I just see the pants? I have no money. I don't even have a savings account because I don't know my mom's maiden name and apparently that's key to the whole thing right there. <laughs> I go in every few weeks and guess. <laughs> kind of a health food nut myself, thanks. To me, hostess is one of the four food groups. <laughs> Though even I don't eat Twinkies because they don't have a chocolate outer coating. And so germs can get into the pores of the cake. <laughs> For me, it is not a health food without a chocolate outer coating. <laughs> Pretty big into the health thing. I went to one of those weightlifting places. Have you done this? It's so disgusting. I went, I, everyone in the place is chained to one of those machines. You go in, they're all going, <laughs> Jeez, if you have to pick something up, anything, and it causes you to go, <laughs> put it down. <laughs> If I go to get out of bed and I make a noise, I go, ah, not enough rest, get back down there. <laughs> and I don't believe for a second that weightlifting is a sport. What they pick up a heavy thing and put it down again. To me, that's indecision. <laughs> I used to work at the International House of Pancakes. Thank you very much. <laughs> you set your goals and you go for them. It was a dream. I made it happen. <laughs> it was the worst job I ever had in my entire life. And I'll tell you something. When people would be rude to me, I would touch their eggs. <laughs> That's a true story. I'd just flip them over in the back with my hands a couple of times. They didn't know. I felt better. It worked out. <laughs> I didn't want to. I had to. It was a terrible job. People complained all the time about the service. And you know, we weren't slow. The floors were sticky. We were stuck in the back trying to get to the tables. We had to make little human chains to get those cakes out there. We did it. <laughs> so me or do I have the worst posture in the history of the world? I hope to eventually go all the way over and become an O. <laughs> I would like to go on Sesame Street and represent the letter O. <laughs> little career girl. By the way, too, if you have huge fat thighs, what you want to do is kind of sit on your legs so you get the full spreading. <laughs> Actually, I am kind of a screwed up person. I admit that openly. My, my parents were very weird. My mom was one of those angry moms that gets mad at absolutely everything. One time when I was little, I knocked a Flintstones glass off the kitchen table. She said, well, damn it, we can't have nice things. <laughs> and now she does a weird thing. She calls me up to tell me things that my dad does that make her mad. Have your parents reached this phase? I, I don't even understand the things that make my mom mad. She'll say stuff like she'll call up and go, like my dad has a garden in the back, so she'll call up and go, comes in here that damn zucchini. <laughs> and I'm waiting for the next sentence. Because I'm thinking that can't possibly be it. No, 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 comes in with a zucchini and what? Hits you with it, rubs it on the wall, something. <laughs> no, but that's actually what she's mad about. Comes in here that damn zucchini. I try to seem upset just to be supportive. 
I go, ah! <laughs> what, does he come right in with his, ah! <laughs> he got a whole bunch of them like that. Sits in there on that damn couch. Okay, now he's gone too far. <laughs> what, does he sit right on the actual car? Ah! <laughs> and they did a really scary thing recently. They bought a Winnebago, um, which, isn't that, that, that means they could pull up in front of my house any day now and just live there. <laughs> well, I tell you what, they're not getting any water and they're not plugging anything in. <laughs> I should have thought of that a long time ago. Does anybody else's mom have an avocado seed in the kitchen window so with the toothpicks in it? Now, what is that, witchcraft or something? I had no idea what this was for a long... I thought it was a model of my dad. <laughs> Drowning. My mom said that she learned to swim. Somebody took her out in a boat and in a lake and threw her off the boat. That's how she learned to swim. I said, Mom, they weren't trying to teach you to swim. <laughs> Actually, now, I was born in Alabama, but I only lived there for a month before I had already done everything there was to do. <laughs> Even as an infant, I was bored and crawled to the state line. <laughs> Last summer, I was in Atlanta for a week, and it nearly killed me. It was awful. I would be walking down the street, not bothering anybody at all, and guys would drive by in trucks and go, Come on, baby. <laughs> Does this usually work for them? <laughs> what, do the women there carry, like, big chains with metal hooks on the end, just kind of snag them trucks? As they go on by? Why, you romantic schema, you. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, it's very... You know, they're so funny in, in North Carolina, too. They're very comfortable around bugs. Now, I am not afraid of them, but I don't want them on my body or in my house if I can avoid it. These guys were so comfortable. One, one day I was in the woods with a friend, and a big bug landed on my back. I mean, a big bug. I could feel it tugging on my shirt. So I go, would you just knock that bug off? And she goes, mm, nope, that's just a devil bug. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> it was like she looked at it first to see if it was the kind of bug that should go or stay. Because <laughs> different bugs there have different rights. I go, it's a bug. It's on my back. I would like it off. Thank you. Mm, nope, that's just a devil bug. It won't even hurt you. <laughs> it's got a dog in its mouth. If you could just knock it off my back. <laughs> also, I get very nervous with, there's like a group of people in this cell, I don't, like the people in Tennessee last year that didn't want anybody to read books that suggested there was life before Bible stories. Remember them? Book burning in 1986. Did we learn nothing from Footloose? <laughs> we have to worry about anything other than that. Actually, I am not a, uh, I'm not a religious person. I, I don't believe in God. I, I, well, I'm a devout atheist. I still go to church. I'm not a heathen. <laughs> I go to an atheist church. We have crippled guys who stand up and testify that they were crippled, and they still are. <laughs> as now the, uh, the as, you dri as you drive out of the airport in Eugene, Oregon, there's a big billboard that says the wages of sin are death. Guess that's their way of saying welcome to town. I would imagine that the wages of sin are death. But by the time they take taxes out, it's just kind of a tired feeling, really. <laughs> well, listen, you guys, I think it's kind of near in time to go, I guess. I know. I gotta, I gotta go. I have to go create a life. <laughs> Isn't that one of those laughs from the teeth thing? think that that is. I do have to go. I have a tendency. Last, last night, I did an hour and a half, and I could have done longer, but the club I was in um, didn't have enough security, and a lot of the audience got away. <laughs> you guys have been very, very nice. Thanks a lot.